Welcome to another recorded lecture in the course Literature and Identity in the Middle East. I'm Dr. Nikolsky and I'm the teacher and coordinator of this course. In the first part of the course, we learn an analytic method called textual theory, which we then use to analyze literature from the Middle East. We follow the introductory book by Joanna Gavins, which is called Textual Theory and Introduction. And we then analyze short stories from the collection Gaza Writes Back, compiled by Rifat al Arir. And you can find links uh, to these two in the descriptions below. The second part of the course focuses on identity issues which are particular to Palestinian society. Today I will talk about chapter six of the book Textual Theory and Introduction by Joanna Gavins. The chapter is titled Attitudes. This chapter is a second in a group of three chapters titled Layers, chapter five, Attitudes, this chapter, and Distances, chapter seven. These three chapters are dedicated to three ways in which the, the, the author, through the text, is manipulating the mind of the reader or the hearer. Manipulating not in a bad sense, but in the sense of creating a text world in the mind of the listener or the reader in ways which are implicit. So today, let us first uh, look at chapter six, attitudes. Then, as usual, we will analyze stories from Gaza Writes Back, and we will end with your assignment for this week. Chapter 6 talks about attitude and describes two attitudes, Bulomaic and Deontic. Bulomaic refers to a wish or strong desire, while deontic refers to the feeling of being obliged to do something. The word attitude or attitudes refers to the story level. When a character in a split discourse world or in a text world creates a new text world, that is a world switch, in many cases, such world switches do not only present a new textual environment, a text world with a different time zone separate from the here and now of the story, but also an attitude toward them. Are they desirable, these world switches, or are they something that is uh, an obligation, something that has to be done, whether willingly or not? There are ways to create these attitudes in the text world, and these words are called modal verbs. So let us first look at uh, what modal verbs are. Modality is a term that refers to the aspects of language which express a speaker's or a writer's attitude to a particular subject. Aspects of language, that is, we are talking here about a linguistic technique to achieve an attitude. In non-linguistic manner, an attitude can be expressed using um, face, facial expressions, for example, or with a certain music which appears with a scene in a movie, etc. But since literature is done with language, with a text, so we are looking for a ling linguistic technique and modality is one of them. Modal expressions in language convey the idea that something is desirable, possible, permissible, etc. This can be done with uh, certain verbs, such as she wants a house on the beach, for example. It can be expressed with adverbs. They went there happily. Modality can also be expressed using uh, auxiliary verbs, which is something you all know from your grammar lessons. Auxiliary verbs are verbs that change the attitude to the main verb. For example, when we, it can convey the idea of ability, then you use the verbs can or could. I can speak English, as you see here uh, in this table. That means we are, the, the actual verb is speaking, but um, what we are conveying is not the speaking itself, but an attitude toward the speaking. We can do it. Yeah? He could run 10 kilometers, 
Now he has lost practice. So the, the actual verb is the running. We are talking about the running, but he, he used to be able to do this. Yeah, or in, uh, in terms of permission, we can talk about can, could, or may. May I sit here? Yeah, so the, the, the general picture that we have in our mind is the picture of sitting. But we are not seated yet because we are not sure about the level of permission that we have regarding to this. So we can talk about may sit or may not sit. Yeah. If you want to convey the idea of advice, then we are using should. You should do your homework. You shouldn't drink alcohol. Uh, oblig obligation. This is the deontic that we will talk about later. You must, you have to. People mustn't smoke in class. Yeah, so they are not uh, um, permitted to smoke in class. We don't have to go to the party if we don't want to. Yeah, so it's not an obligation. So it's a negative obligation, so to speak. And yeah? so the going to the party is the main issue, but must or must not or have to or have don't have to is uh, cr creates the attitude with regard to going to the class and this is the dutch version which you can see here so auxiliary verbs they facilitate the main verb by asserting a potential an expectation permission ability possibility or obligation to the main verb yeah, so the important thing stays the main verb. If you think about it, also the future in English is expressed in a modulated way. Will, I will go, I will sit, I will eat. As it facilitates the action which did not take place yet, even though there is an intention to do it. And this intention is the attitude toward it. So as you can see here, here are some words that, that would express a Boulomaic model uh, world or Boulomaic text world. And with the word Boulomaic, we mean something that is um, desired, that's something that is uh, wanted. If you think of the word bulimia, yeah, this is coming from uh, the same root as uh, Boulomaic, uh, something that um, um, there's a drive uh, to do it. So, Bulomaic uh, modality is when something is hoped, desired in a positive way, or feared or regretted in a negative way. So, a negative Bulomaic uh, desire is, uh, is fear or a negative feeling. And here are some words that uh, can be used for this, uh, to express this. For example, the word hope. I hope that you will leave. Yeah, I want very much that you will leave. I wish you'd leave. Yeah, so the word wish or I regret that you are leaving. I want, I don't want you to leave. Yeah, so want in a negative way. Um, another example, um, yeah, another structure that, sh that Gavin's uh, quotes in her book, the structure be and to or be that constructions can carry Bulomai commitment and Bulomai commitment, that means a Bulomai uh, text world, a world to which we are emotionally committed as Bulomai, as wanting it. Here is the example from Gavin's. It is good to see his friends again. It is regrettable that she died so young, etc. Bulomai Modern worlds can also be created using adverbs such as hopefully or happily as we have seen earlier. Here are some more examples in a more um, picturesque manner. Yeah, so this little girl wants to be a singer. She hates spinach and she's afraid of snakes. These are all Bulomaic expressions and they create the object of the Bulomaic uh, commitment in the mind of the character in the story, but mainly in the mind of the reader. And this is the text that Gavins uses uh, in her book as an example for Bulomaic uh, text world. This is how she's describing it. 
The extract below is from OK, a best-selling magazine in the United Kingdom, which has several international versions, all containing news and interviews with celebrities of various kinds, from film stars to royalty, television actors to sport people, etc. In this extract, the developing relationship between British musicians Michelle Heaton and Andy Scott Lee are detailed in a feature which is part article and part interview. Here is the text. My ideal wedding would be a total fairy tale, says Michelle. I want to travel to a big church in a horse and carriage and for it to be really girly. I want it to be traditional and fun. Before jetting off to Dubai. Michelle just had time to work out some plans for her wedding dress and it certainly sounds like it's going to be a stunner. It would have to be backless because when you're standing at the altar that's what everyone is looking at. Says Michelle. I'd really like to have diamonds down my spine and for it to be really tight at the top but to have a floaty skirt. I won't wear a veil because I want to keep it simple. I've got it in my head that I'd like to wear cream and have yellow and peach colored flowers. Andy would wear cream as well. Michelle Heaton is describing here her dream wedding to her boyfriend. They indeed got married in 2006 and also split in 2008. The planned wedding, says Govins, is a fairy tale world of someone who is already living in a fantasy land, as the description of the Dubai vacation shows. And this is also in the text. From this text world, full of material intentional processes, frolicked, kissed, rubbed, emerge a few world switches that have to do with a planned wedding. The descriptions are a time world switches uttered by Heaton, that is direct speech by her, and at times a world switch, which is the description by the author of the OK article, telling about Heaton's inner world in the third person. For example, the journalist is saying, she wants a day to beat all days. The verb once results in a world switch to the day that beats all days, to be a boulomé commitment, that is conceptualized a mental image of that day together with the attitude toward it, wanting it. Yeah, the, this is wanting is the attitude. The text word of the day that beats all days is only an actor accessible, known only to Heaton, even though the person who creates the text world is a participant in the split discourse world the journalist. This is a short-lived text world and a more elaborate one is created by Heaton herself in a direct speech which describes the backless cream dress, the diamonds down her spine, etc., all of which do not exist yet, but tell us so much about Heaton even when non-existing. So let us look now at how to indicate or to write write up a Boulomé commitment in uh, textual theory diagrams. This is Heaton's um, Boulomé commitment, uh, Boulomé world switches. So you see, it's very simply done from within uh, the world building elements already. We have a world switch, which is now indicated by the letters B-O-U-L, bulb for Bulomaic. So it's a Bulomaic world switch. So we have here one Bulomaic world switch into the ideal wedding and another Bulomaic world switch into a detailed description of the uh, wedding day. Here is the uh, text from Gavin's, yeah, the, the whole diagram from Gavin's. So there's not much uh, innovative here in terms of the diagram. It is the same world switches of which we learned earlier, 
only did Gavin's uh, marks the uh, the bulumaic aspect of it here. So let us look at this. Uh, yeah, we just saw it before. We start off with a central world uh, text world, which is participant accessible, which is on, uh, in Dubai on the beach. We see Michelle Heaton um, and, and Andy Scott Lee, uh, frolicking, kissing, rubbing backs, uh, etc. And from there we have some world switches into things that happened in the past. Uh, one of them is the Bulomaic uh, future day to beat all days of um, of Heaton, which is called uh, here a Bulomaic model world. Uh, we have a world switch to world switch three, which talks about uh, the situation of Heaton before the proposal even, yeah, this is something the journalist is reporting about it in third person, the situation before the proposal. And already then, Heaton had two Bulomaic world switches here that we saw earlier, one to a fairy tale wedding and one being more specific about what she wants in her wedding. Now let's move to, move to the Deontic uh, text worlds to the ontic commitment if you want the the ontic uh, world is goal oriented it has a profound situation on the story such as creating an imperative text world it is your obligation to be to achieve xyz so you must do uh, xyz and this is what is moving the plot. So the words here to be used is words such as ought, you ought to call your mother. There can be a negative text world also, uh, but of course you don't have to. Yeah, This is a negative deontic model world. Here is the interesting thing about the negative model worlds that are created. In order to create a negative model world, one first has to create a positive one and then negate it. You, you cannot negate it unless you have already a positive one in your as a mental picture. All right? This is a very important issue to be uh, to understand about negative world switches, text worlds, etc. So there are always positive text worlds that are being negated. Uh, also here, the form of uh, to be and to, it is forbidden to mm -hmm. feed the animals. It, it was, yes, to be, it was required that they inform the authorities, etc. And let us look at some of the pictures here. Let me move myself away from there. So all the expressions of duty and the ideas of duty that come around. Um, you should be this when you grow up, uh, as opposed to the singer that this little girl wanted to be. You must eat the spinach even though you don't like it. Um, and do not talk to strangers, um, as we know that bad consequences can come out of it. So the deontic model worlds are usually pick, uh, forming a picture of something that is um, is heavy. Yeah, it's, it's not driven by fun, but uh, driven by obligation. But even so, obligation is not always something that's uh, sad, as in this picture, like the example that uh, Gavins uh, is using. This is from the book, How to Keep Your Volkswagen Alive, step-by-step -step procedure for a complete idiot. This is the text Gavins uses as an example of the Ontic text world. Uh, it comes from a book by John Muir, from 1997. We will not dwell on it for too long, but here is the text. 
starting not at the beginning that you see here. First, in the Volkswagen, you have to shift, and that requires a degree of coordination between your left foot, clutch, and your right foot, accelerator, that only practice will develop. There are four gears forward and you have to use them all, all the time. No shortcuts like starting in second and skipping third. You must use all four gears. Second, you must get used to shifting on hills and the gradual progress that a Voxy bus makes in the mountains means one thing, start earlier. Third, don't over rev the engine. Later modules have governors that prevent over revving on the high side but don't help when going down a steep hill in third. To make the engine run too fast, over rev, at any time means stretching the engine past its ability to return to the same shape, real trouble. There are speeds you shall not exceed in each gear. Learn them and stick to them and love it. Fourth, never lug the engine. You must shift down on that hill or in town to keep the engine RPM about 2000 or you will soon pay for your perfidy with a new engine. The obligations of a Volkswagen's owner are expressed by the antique modality which express duty. Let us look uh, straight away at the text world uh, diagram of it. You see that like the Boulomaic uh, world, the deontic world switches have the letters on them, D-E-O. What is designated here with a dotted lines are negative deontic worlds. Yeah? So we talked about the negative world switches. So here you see them on the left and in a few places. Uh, we should stop and focus on the negative text world for a minute. Yeah, so we did talk about it, saying that if in order to create a negative text world, a negative world switch, we first have to create a positive one and then negate it. All right, so here in the middle, you see the main text world of, uh, of the discourse, the split discourse, mm -hmm. and you have a few deontic text worlds being created, some negative and some positive. So if we look at the top left, the ontic world, which is a negative one, and we follow where it uh, takes us. So it says you should not over rev the engine. Yeah, so it's an obligation, you should, but it's a negative one. You should not over rev the engine or just under it, you should not lug the engine or under this, you should not drive with ex exceeded speed. Yeah, so, and from there we have a world switch to, which is an imperative. You should learn how to use the stick and you should love this. Yeah, if we go back to the uh, main text world, the middle, we see also positive deontic world switches. So the top one there on the right, you should use the shift, yeah, the shift gear when you, uh, when you are driving your Volkswagen or under it, you should use all gears. Yeah, and then, then there is an imperative world switch. It's a negative one, we know because it's a dotted line. You should not start in the second gear or skip to the third, etc. Yeah, so again, the, there's no, no great innovations, only that the world switches are designated by the, uh, the letters DEO to, to tell us that it's a deontic world switch. So I put in this picture here to summarize the issue of the deontic and bulomaic model worlds or model, uh, text which are world switches with a bulomaic or deontic uh, commitment with an attitude which is bulomaic or deontic. They are important because this attitude moves the protagonist and therefore moves uh, the plot of the story. So we can look at it as the deontic ones are pushing the origo to action, not uh, as something that is desired, but as something that is forced on them from the outside, 
from the back, so to speak. Yeah, so something that is scaring them, something that is pushing them to do something, something that they didn't ask to do, they don't want it on their own, but it is something else that is pushing them. And we can look at the bulomaic. This is also something, could be also something on the outside, but this is something that is pulling them. This is something that is making them act because they want it, yeah, or they uh, don't want it, so they move away. So it is something that is pulling them, as I described here. So, uh, yeah, so the love is always pulling the protagonist to do certain things as opposed to... Um, um, legal issues or proper behavior, which is pushing the origo, the protagonist, to act in many cases against their will. Yeah. So I hope this uh, visual uh, image of it is going to help you um, remember these two attitudes, the bulumaic and the deontic one. So now I want to say a few words about the importance of these model worlds to the issue of identity. As uh, at the end of the day, this is the focus of the work in this course, the issue of identity in literature. The world switches that are created in the text are telling about the realities that are not part of the here and now of, this, of the protagonist and the other relevant people in the story. They tell us about the background of these people or give us extra, inf extra information to understand the protagonist's actions. But switches to text words to which the protagonist has a declared attitude results in a much better understanding of the protagonist and their motivation to act. This is one point where the bulomaic and the deontic attitudes are very important. The other thing that is important there is that identity is something that belongs to the cultural sphere. It is part of the semiotic reality. Yeah? It is not the biological reality of the person, but it is something that is cultural, a reality which is mental not the material biological one, but in the sphere of meaning. Therefore, whatever is meaningful for the protagonist in the text is what is creating their identity. So the deontic and bulomaic realities are the most revealing with regard to identity. Let me summarize this with a few bullet points. With identity, one posits oneself as a member of a society with a role or ideology which harmonizes with their group. Identity is therefore very culture dependent and world switches point to the reality that are outside the here and now of the story and therefore to the wider context of the protagonist. This tells us about their identity. Of special value are our world switches about which we know the attitude of the protagonist. It is formed by deontic worlds, I mean the attitude and the identity, by realities to which we have an obligation or the protagonist rather has an obligation and the protagonist is driven into action uh, by this identity. Bulomaic text will tell about the protagonist's desires and goals or about avoidance of undesired ones and thus uh, again about their identity how do these goals and these obligations influence the current state of the protagonist? Into what action do they drive the protagonist? From this, uh, we can learn about their identity. Let's look into the application of this in um, Bulomaic and Deontic text world in stories from Gaza Writes Back. So here's from the story, Will I Ever Get Out? And this is the text. I was, then, expected to pursue my university studies abroad, but it seemed that fate wanted it another way. The mere idea of me leaving was out of the question for my parents. They wanted me to stay. And I, 
therefore, had no choice but to join the Faculty of Medicine here, in Gaza. So this is, these are the opening lines, or uh, part of the opening uh, words, part of the opening of the story, uh, Will I Ever Get Out, as you remember. So let's look at some Bulomaic and Deontic uh, model worlds that are being created here. Let's start with the I on the left. So I was expected to pursue university studies abroad. Yeah, this was an expectation from the protagonist. So this was a um, 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 deontic reality for him. Yeah. So we have here the deontic uh, world switch, world switch one. But fate wanted it another way. Yeah. So there is someone else involved here, which is fate. Another became a character in this scene and what fate wanted actually uh, won, yeah, won in the story. Yeah, so, but this is, fate is coming in here as, as a persona in the text and what fate wants happens as opposed to what the protagonist felt was his obligation. So let, let us now look at the parents column here on the right in the in the central uh, diagram so the parents are the ones who wanted him to stay yeah so we sort of begin to think who is the fate here is it fate or is it the parents so the parents desire was that he would stay yeah so the thought of leaving this country was out of the question for them they wanted him to stay and therefore the i which we see here under the parents had no choice but to stay in Gaza. Yeah, so for the I, the I person of the story, the, the, person, the protagonist and who is telling the story, this will, yeah, this Bulomaic uh, world of the parents became a deontic world for the protagonist. He had to stay in Gaza. He had no choice, as he feels. And this is a deontic uh, commitment, yeah, so a feeling of obligation. So you see that the interplay here, because between the deontic and the bulomaic, which is creating a feeling about the person who is constantly uh, in tension, yeah, in a situation of tension between what he wants and what he feels his obligation is. And as we know, since we know the story until the end, we know that this mixed tension, yeah, this tension between these two is uh, very typical for this protagonist, throughout, this protagonist throughout the story. So here is a small section from uh, the story Canari about a Bulomaic, uh, neg negative Bulomaic text world. Here is the text. He ran to them and gestured to Gassan to let him carry the two bags. Gassan, however, offered him only one, the lighter of the two. He did not want his brother to fail his first test carrying the bags. Yeah, so uh, if we look at the diagram here, so he ran and gestures and Ghazan, his uh, brother, offered him one bag because, and here comes a negative Bulomaic world switch or text world uh, of, Gaz, of Ghazan's, uh, what, he was, what his brother was thinking. His brother did not want him to fail the first test. Yeah, so that's why he only offered him one bag to carry. So look at, this is a very, very small section of the story. Yeah, so a little gesture that the brother did resulting from a negative Bulomaic uh, world in uh, Gazan's mind. But look at how important this little detail is. Yeah, the fact that his brother was pre-thinking a possible problem and solved it already. Yeah, because the brother, who is a person 
in the mind of the protagonist in the story. So this person in the mind of a person in the text had a thought that he didn't want to happen resulted with such an emotional impact on the protagonist and on us, which in a way explains almost all the behavior of the protagonist, which was quite uh, dramatic. Yeah, the, the suicide bombing is a dramatic, dramatic act. So look how important this point in the story is, and therefore it is really important to know how to describe it properly. The new story this week is Bundles by Mohammed Suleiman, a Gaza-based writer and human rights uh, worker. He obtained a master, master's degree in uh, human rights from the London School of Economics. He also participated in the anthology Gaza, Gaza Writes Back with three stories. Another story of his uh, will be the focus of your assignment this week. You can read more about him in the book Gaza Writes Back, which uh, where you can find uh, which you can find on Nestor. At the back, there is some information about the various authors. The story bundles tells about a single mother, a widow, Salma, whose son Naji is a young man who was obliged to become the breadwinner of the small family. He worked as a smuggler in the tunnels of Gaza. And this only provided a very meager income. He was offered a more dangerous smuggling job. Uh, we never learned what was, uh, what was involved there, but was caught and put in jail inside Israel. The story begins three years after he was jailed and not yet trialed and his mother is going to visit him. From this story time, the mother's journey to visit his son, we learn through world switches about the past events, the father's death and the son's having to go to work and um, joining this uh, more dangerous work. We also learn about the mother's love for her son and her wish that he will not engage in this dangerous work. In the end, even what we thought was the present tense of the story ends up being past, past tense, as we are now three years after the time of this visit. And it is there that we re-perceive the time of the story as a world switch into the past. And we also learned that the mother never got to see her son. We don't know exactly why. Perhaps it is because Salma could not bring herself to go through the cavity check before entering the prison. By now she receives the news that Naji is dead. The Bolomaic worlds in this story are mostly of the mother wanting to see her son and to keep him with her. The Deontic worlds are those that restrict her action because of circumstances, being a one parent, being a poor family, because of the occupation, or her feeling of disability because she stops herself from acting. Here are some analytic diagrams of text world theory style to express the deontic and uh, bolomaic world switches in the story. Here are the opening lines of the story. At daybreak, Salma, a plump, brunette woman in her early 40s, was wrapping some bundles of Naji's favorite food and cigarettes. When she finished packing everything into a bundle, she dressed up and prepared herself as well. And this is what you have on the slide. Confusing feelings occupied her. She didn't know whether she should be in high spirits, as she was, or dejected, as she intermittently felt. So let us look at the table now. Uh, the text world one, the initial text world of the story, usually just mentioned as text world, not even numbered. We are at the daybreak, at home probably, 
and uh, we hear about bundles, Najee's favorite food and cigarettes as objects. And the actors are Najee, probably, even though we don't know about him, he's not doing anything. And Salma, with whom we, we have relational processes of being plumped, brunette, and early 40s. And she is uh, material processing, packing bundles. And then uh, when she's finished packing, now the story begins. She's uh, dressed up, she prepared herself, she occupied by confusing feelings. And about those, we have two world switches. One is a deontic one into world switch one, yeah, deontic text world one. Salma should be in high spirit. Yeah, she feels that perhaps she should be in high spirit. And the second deontic world switch, second deontic text world, is that Salma should be dejected, yeah, de depressed. And she feels about both as obligations, and she doesn't even know which one she should do, which one is really the obligation. Yeah, this is a um, very interesting situation. These are two very simple deontic world switches to a situation in which Salma should be. So we hear that at the moment she is overall high-spirited but intermittently dejected. She doesn't know whether this is what she should be. That is, she feels uneasy in the here and now with regard to her feelings because she doesn't know whether this is what she should be feeling. This is the height of being weak, yeah? being unagented, being unable herself to, to tell what she should be feeling. Yeah? This inability of self-expression will be the characteristic of Salma throughout the story. Sometimes because of a real lack of knowledge, sometimes because of her personal lack of agency. So here, uh, Mohammed Suleiman is being, beside many other things, a critique of Palestinian society to some extent. Um, because he, he portrays this image of the simple, normal woman as one who is being completely disagented even more than the men in the situation of occupation. Yeah? So, it's not only the occupation, the Israeli occupation, which renders people um, disagented. In her case, it's also being a woman in a world of men, of Muslim, uh, of the Palestinian society, which renders her so unable to make the simplest decision even about what she feels. You will see this... Uh, Slight criticism of, of Palestinian society also in the story uh, we shall return, which will be for your assignment. Our rare place where uh, Salma allows herself to be strong, that is demanding, is in her relationship with her son. Here she is telling him what to do. She is presenting the deontic reality to him. Just before he sets out for the new job, Salma felt that uh, Naji was disturbed by something, but he was not uh, telling her about it. So she says, Don't lie to me. She snapped at him. You've been acting strange since you came home. What happened? Just let me know. And indeed, he does not lie to her and tells her about the new job he was asked to do and that he uh, knows that it is dangerous. Salma's character is showing now. It is dangerous, I know, said Naji. His mother kept silent. I'll make 4,000 shekels for a two-day job. I can use the money to start a small enterprise. I can be free. When she's not stopping him from going, as it says in the story, it's dangerous, I know, said Naji. His mother kept silent. Let's look at the table here. So uh, world building elements, 
the time is uh, during breakfast, the location is at home, the objects are tea, sage in the tea, and the enactor, enactors are Naji, who is drinking the tea in silence, and Salma. And Salma eventually snapping at Naji, and then Naji is telling about what happened in work. So Naji, when he's telling about what happened in work, he is making a world switch into text world two, as we see here, uh, where he tells about Abu Sham, his boss, who was asking him to do a dangerous job. So this is one. And then he's making another world switch, a Bulo make uh, one now, in which he's telling that he wants to do this job, even though it is dangerous. Yeah, so this is text world three here, which is Bulumaik, where Naji is, uh, will be making 4,000 shekels in two days, and he will start a business, and he will be free. All these are world switches of Naji, what he imagines he can do if he, do if he takes this uh, dangerous job. Yeah, so here his mother kept silent, and by this, she, in a way, allowed him to do what he wants, but she was suppressing saying what she wanted. Yeah, and this suppression is typical to her character. And as uh, I said, is this sort of uh, criticism on the status of women in Palestinian society made by Muhammad Suleiman. The work on the story of the group stories should be quite uh, straightforward. Try looking for the ontic and bulomaic expressions and checking how these are initiating the protagonist's identity, possibly uh, by being a big motivation behind their actions. It is also possible to look into changes in uh, the identity of the protagonists yeah, in, in some of the stories by studying their deontic, deontic and bolomaic world switches. For your assignment, work on the story We Shall Return by Mohammed Suleiman, like the story bundle that we saw. The story We Shall Return depicts Palestinian refugees after the Nakba their uh, journey into the unknown. Yeah, there, these are um, a few families, some, some men with their wives and children that are uh, walking all day long. And then in the evening, the three men are sitting and uh, having a conversation. And most of the story is about what is happening in this conversation. So um, the relationships between them, and uh, their attitude toward what has happened to them. So these are the, the, the issues that come up. So um, work on this one. Uh, look for Deontic and Bulomaic world switches in the story, one of each, and explain how this is motivating the protagonists and assess in what direction does this motivation move the plot or message of the story. Submit your assignment in the assignment link found below this lecture. That's it for this week. Thank you for listening and see you next time.